This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. A developing story out of Chesterfield where a man was severely beaten in a Deerberg's parking lot. Tonight, police tell us it was a case of road rage. The victim is in the hospital right now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. I'm Kelly Jackson. This all happened at the Deerbergs on Olive Boulevard and Woods Mill Road last night. Five in your size, Travis Cummings is at the store with what you have learned from police so far, Travis. Kelly, Mike, police say this was all over a minor incident, something that should have been a simple exchange of insurance turned out to be way worse. I want to tell you exactly what happened here inside that parking lot. Officers responded to a fight call at the Deerbergs here at Olive and Woods Mill Road that was started as a road rage incident. We're told a man in his 70s was seriously hurt and is now in the hospital. The other driver stayed at the scene and cooperated with police. Residents and workers who spend time in this parking lot say they were shocked things would go this far. Police say road rage is quite common, but things should never get to this point. This serves as a cautionary tale of how quickly these sorts of incidents can escalate into something far more serious. Simply don't engage the other person. Call the police when safe to do so. No one is in custody at this time. Police are still investigating. We did reach out to both the victim's family and Deerbergs. Both of them declined to comment at this time. We're live in West County. Travis Cummings, 5 on your side. There's a new push tonight to ban open carry in St. Louis City. That's according to our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal. Alderwoman Kara Spencer introduced the bill. It bans openly carrying guns for anyone who does not have a state concealed carry permit. This comes after videos from the past few weekends show people walking around downtown with long rifles. So far, the bill has only been filed. Tonight, residents of a small neighborhood in South St. Louis County that flooded on Sunday are finding out they are on the hook for the full repair cost. Five your Sides' Tracy Henson is live in South County, and you looked into what happened and explains why most homeowners are stuck with the bills, Tracy. So Kelly, it is kind of a rite of passage in St. Louis to have your basement flood. Now, what do you do when it happens to you for the first time? Do you call your insurance? Do you call MSD? Well, in this case, it doesn't matter who you call. You aren't getting any help. It was coming up from the basement and also starting to trickle through all the windows. And then it just started to burst through the windows. Mother's Day ruined by Mother Nature. I, all I could think is this is a nightmare. In the moment, definitely, but in the aftermath, even more of a mess, which is why Pat Herzing's son emailed Five on Your Side. I feel like kind of powerless. You know, I live five hours north outside of Chicago in Indiana, and, you know, it's not easy for me to just get down there. He's mad. Mad Insurance won't cover a cent of the damage. Oh, they don't cover it because I don't live in a floodplain, so there's no provision in our insurance policy for flooding of any sort. I checked with a local insurance agent. He confirmed that most major companies will not sell flood insurance to a home not in a FEMA floodplain. There are other options, but they can be expensive. Now, if it's a sewer backup, MSD will cover it. This was a backup. It was coming up as well as coming in. A backup, but not one the Metropolitan Sewer District is taking responsibility for. There was a colossal amount of rainfall. Our investigation here does not show that the, the storm sewers weren't open and flowing. There was simply more water than could fit in the pipes at one time. So no coverage from MSD, no help from insurance, and now Pat's on the hook for easily 10 to 12,000. A price her son doesn't think she should have to shoulder alone. I really feel like it's just a, a major failing of the insurance industry to to wiggle out of this sort of thing. You know, I mean, it's I feel like if they can deny this, what else can they can they try to deny? From what we learned today, there is not much else that residents can do about these bills. Now, you're probably wondering, this area has probably seen some flooding before. Well, not in a very long time. Most of the residents we talked to have been here for about 10 years, and they've never seen anything like what they saw on Mother's Day. Live in South County, I'm Tracy Henson, 5 on your side. Time for the weather first forecast. Another warm and hazy day. So let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo, Jim. 
Yeah, and no rain at all for today or tonight. Now tomorrow, some limited rain chances, but nothing too terribly heavy. And really over the next seven to 10 days, very limited rain chances in here. Now that wildfire smoke aloft is still here. So that beautiful sunset and sunrises that we've been seeing, we're still going to see that because it's mainly clear. A few clouds moving through. Of course, the Cardinals are playing tonight and great weather for that. Look at this temperature, 83 degrees, 5 degrees above the average, which sits at 78. So we're at 79 for the Cardinals at 7 o'clock, 72 at 10 o'clock. So a really nice evening and a light wind and that wildfire smoke stays aloft making for that orangey red sunset and then the rain chances for Friday. But as you'll see coming up and Scotty talked about a four o'clock, not a lot of rain coming our way, but I'll time it out for you in just a few minutes, Mike. And we keep the weather first forecast updated online at all times. For that information, just text the word weather to 314-425-5355. Well, this week, Lieutenant Governor Mike Keogh launched his bid to become Missouri's next governor. He joined Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft, who announced last month that he is running. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, talked to Keogh today. He has a preview of the GOP primary showdown. Kelly and Mike, Decision 2024 is shaping up to be a major election year in Missouri. For the first time since 2016, the governor's seat is open, and two big names in Missouri politics are already sizing each other up for a slugfest. Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe launching his campaign with this video showing his humble roots from North St. Louis to scratching and clawing his way to success in business, he said. His first ad taking a bit of a veiled swipe at Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft saying, quote, I didn't have a famous father. Ashcroft's campaign hit right back, singling Kehoe out for supporting gas tax increases to pay for infrastructure improvements and labeling him with this nickname, Tax Hike Mike. Kehoe said he didn't want to trade in the politics of nicknames, but did defend his voting record. I've cut way more taxes than I propose. The, the issue that they're talking about was our proposition to try to increase the fuel tax so that Missourians could uh, invest more into the road and investment in our road and bridge system. Are gas taxes in Missouri too high right now? Yes, compared to other states, no, not at all. We're still in the lower uh, quartile of what where our gas taxes are compared to other states. And what Missourians have to realize is we have the seventh road system in the United States and the sixth largest bridge system in the United States. That primary field could still expand. Senate Republican Bill Eigel has expressed interest in jumping into that primary race, too. No official word just yet. You can watch that full exchange with Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe on the record up on KSDK.com or the 5 Plus app now. Thanks, Mark. Tonight, police are searching for whoever tried to steal an ATM in St. Louis. Around 2 this morning, police were called to Lindell Bank on Clayton Avenue. Officers found an ATM damaged in the middle of the road. Witnesses said they saw a red pickup dragging it. That truck was found abandoned in Richmond Heights. It had been reported stolen out of Washington, Missouri. Police say it doesn't appear any money was stolen.